Well, hello there and welcome back to Common Farm Flowers. My daughter says I'm looking a bit eccentric. I don't think so. This is, uh, this is the last clean apron and this is falling apart and I really must get more aprons, but we might have a new, a rebrand uh, over the winter. So I'm not gonna spend money having new aprons when we might have a rebrand. So. Uh, we're just going to have to live with the completely falling apart aprons and I'll sew them together from time to time and just keep on going. Today, I'm going to make a 50th wedding anniversary bouquet. Um, golden, obviously. Uh, it is the 10th of September, so come with me through the garden. We are zone 8, uh, southwest of England, and come and see what we've got. And we're going to cut gold and then I'm going to make a lovely bouquet so stick with me through the process and you'll see the whole thing and if you're new to the channel you're very welcome please do subscribe press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up and if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful you can always buy me a coffee or better still join my club uh, the links to coffee buying and club joining are in the blurb to all my clips uh, and if you join the club you'll be with 300 others they can't be wrong and I appreciate it. I've been a bit absent over the last few days, but you know how it is at the end of the school holidays, you think, oh, I'll just get everybody back to school and then I'll get back to work. And then you get everybody back to school and you realise that you've spent the last weeks facing a wall of mess. <laughs> but because the children have been dancing around in front of the mess, you haven't really seen the mess. But they go back to school and you're like, oh my God excuse me, oh my gosh, I must sort this out. And so for that reason, I still haven't got on top of the laundry. But anyway, moving on. These are self-sown sunflowers. I don't grow many sunflowers. I, I don't do much in the way of market style bouquets, which are brilliant. So sunflowers are really, really good if you do farmer's markets and things like that because they're such fun and they look great and people love them and they'll take a handful home for their kitchen table. That's not really my market, but if I were a flower farmer and I were doing lots of markets, I would grow sunflowers. Um, the seed for these have been in the ground for about probably three years and suddenly popped up. And I thought, well, I'll make the most of them. I'm not gonna weed them out because they're gorgeous and the bees love them and the you know, they're good, they're a good thing, but they're not my harvest. However, I'm going to cut them for this golden anniversary bouquet. The colours, we'll talk about the colours as we go. Obviously, I'm not just going to cut yellow, but I will have some yellow because it's a golden wedding. But gold is not just yellow. Look, my, my wedding ring is coppery because it's rose gold, so we'll have some pink. Uh, you can have white gold, so we'll have some white. We need to have depth of field, otherwise we don't see things. And I think one of the reasons that people say they don't like yellow is because often it is presented as a sort of on its own, fait accompli. And of course, that's not how yellow works. Yellow works in a, in a branching zone across the way. So we're going to cut lots of different material. I'm going to cut 50 stems. It's a 50th wedding anniversary. Let's have a 50 stem bouquet. I'm going to make the bouquet at the end. Um, but they won't all be yellow stems. Come on, let's go cutting. Look, green zinnias, definitely worth cutting. And this is a mix of zinnias from Higgledy Garden. Um, so I've got some of these lovely greener colored ones. And I'm going to have some bright yellow. This is the best zinnia crop I've ever had, despite our wet summer. I think they've just, uh, it's actually not been that terrible. I think we've sort of said it's a terrible summer. But really, I think we've had quite a good summer because we've had plenty of rain compared to last summer, which was a write-off. And last summer was boiling hot. It was really, really boiling. I hated last summer. Give me rain any day of the week.
There you are. Gold. Yellow. Greenish. Yellow. Mix it up. All right, as we're passing, we'll have some of this lovely millet for a sort of luxurious feel. And look at this Spanish flag. I grew it. It's an annual climber. Um, and it's got really nice long stems. I'm going to cut some of that for... Uh, it's, it's, it's golden. This is going to go in my golden bouquet, definitely. And also beautiful and cuts very beautifully white cobia scandens. <sighs> How's that for a combination? And look, the white cosmos has been hammered by the rain a bit, but we can deadhead it and there's plenty of good material for cutting here. We'll have some of this and oh yes, never say no to green amaranthus. These are side shoots from thicker stems further down where I've cut them before. They keep growing. They shoot again very, very effectively. And for those of you who ask if we had slugs, yes, and look at the size of this one. Two for scale, hello friend. So to cut the cobia scandens, the skill is, you can see where I've been pulling it off the, off the trellis here. And I'm getting quite nice long stems. What you have to do is make sure you know where the beginning and the end are. It's pretty, pretty tough. So there's the end of a stem. There you go. It holds up really, really well in water. Believe me. It's, um, it's not a plant I sell vast quantities of because florists tend to look at it and go, it's too complicated and they don't necessarily trust it, which is fair enough. Uh, it's not necessarily something they come across all the time, but I love it for me. And for the Spanish flag, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just finding long stems. Here's a nice long stem. And cutting them off. And it does feel as though sometimes you're just cutting into the whole trellis. And you are a bit. But you know, I'm not going to kill it, look. There's plenty, plenty for all. So for this golden bouquet, I'm gonna have some of these white dahlias at the front. And then can you see, there are orange splashes. They are reverted purple pearl. So we'll have a few of those. And then this apricot is very lovely. Apricot desire, very fond of that. We'll have a few of that. And they're not golden, but they're kind of, when I paint with the bouquet, if you like, they will come together to make a golden blur. And right over here, ready for, they held up to the rain well last night and they could do with a good deadhead. Um, and there's another apricotty color, slightly different color, whiter. And this is Carolina Wagamans. Here she is. So we'll have some of her mix in. And then up to up the top here, I'm going to see if I can get some good white roses. Definitely some of that lovely golden darts gold physocarpus and some of the grass behind it. Um, I'm hoping for good quality despite the rain, which I'm not complaining about. <laughs> uh, Vanessa Bell roses, there they are, the white ones. And I, I might just whip around and see if I can get anything else sort of opportunistically from up here. And then we'll be done. Oh, look, a little bronze fennel, self-sown. Won't ignore this. Waste not, want not. Right, there we are. I think that's enough. Let's go make the bouquet. Can you see with the colours, it's not a golden, golden bouquet. But when I mix up, these bright yellow sunflowers and the slightly pinkier apricotty of these dahlias. 
and I can soften it all with the white of the Cobia scandens, the pale lemon of these roses, heat it up again with some of the bright yellow zinnias, and then I've got the Spanish flag for detail, for just as a flourish, along with the grasses. Tiny bit of pink. Again, it's as if you're painting. If you were making a copper colour with paints on a, on a palette, you would have white, yellow and a little bit of pink. <laughs> so I have a little bit of pale pink Achillea and um, some pale pink snaps, coppery colours, not very much. I'm just going to mix them in. And when you put all the colours together, the impression of it all will be golden. And the pink and the apricot will depth and the, deepen the field of colour. It won't be too yellow, but there'll be plenty of gold. Anyway, I hope it makes a sort of interesting story to look at. And I think what happens with the eye, I mean, you know, I'm no expert, but, but I think what happens is when one sees a bouquet that is made from so many different elements, the reason it's arresting, the reason one stops and looks at it, is because one's brain says, hold on a second, how do those colours work? And that stopping and looking is very good for one's mental health. So if you are walking around your garden, stop and look and possibly pick yourself some stems. This is a very big 30 stem challenge, but maybe can you go out into your garden and pick a mix that you wouldn't normally cut Take yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and see if you can <clears throat> make something very beautiful out of something that perhaps you wouldn't ordinarily have considered. The Spanish flag is not a cut flower. That's not what people grow. People do not grow it for cutting. But why not? Let's cut into the vines and, and make something with it. Maybe you're somebody who doesn't like yellow and you think your garden is full of not yellow, but actually I bet you find there is some yellow in there. And if you cut some yellow, you see how it lifts everything else. Try not to be too matchy-matchy. Anyway, if you do do some 30 stem challenges, do share them on your Instagram feed and I'll share some of them over to my stories. I'm always on my Instagram, if, whenever I see somebody has a 30 stem challenge, I don't do all of them obviously, but um, quite often I'll share 30 stem challenges on my my Instagram feed because when you go into your garden and cut a lovely bunch of flowers and make something that you're proud of take that five minutes allow yourself to look and be allow the synapses in your brain to go oh color Tetris it's very very good for your mental health and if I share your picture on my stories then possibly it'll inspire somebody else and it might really make somebody's day. It might really change the way somebody looks at their garden and really help them. You know, you never know what people are going through. And sometimes people just need to take a pair of snips out into their garden and cut some flowers. So let's inspire people to do that. Right, I'm going to go make this bouquet and I'll show you as I go along. I can't turn the thing off. Oh, come on. Now, this is not going to be an absolutely enormous bouquet, but it's going to be big enough. And I want it to look loose enough. I want it to be full of life and very relaxed. That I'm going to make it in three parts. Um, because if I made it in as one, even with the with a twist in the stems, which allows the stem, the, each flower head to, to lean out of the bouquet, you would end up with quite a tight head of flowers, which is a look and that's fine, but I want something kind of really generous. Um, it's only being delivered half a mile up the road, uh, so I don't have to protect it too much for travel or, you know, it, the practicalities of delivering are entirely in my control. And so I can make it very large and floaty. Um, and one of the ways I'm going to do that is by making three bouquets, which I will then tie together. So I'm going to put this on the slow, swizzy, yuppy thing. 
uh, so you'll see me making it. I'm not going to film me making the whole thing from start to finish because it'll take too long and you'll all faint. But um, the whizzy uppy thing will show you slowly how it works. It will show you fairly fastly how it works. Um, and I'll stop from time to time and explain things as I go along. So let's go. So I've got, I've got about a third of the bouquet is made and I've got a lovely long piece of Spanish flag here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it into the mix so that the mix holds it up. Otherwise I risk it falling out and, and getting lost. And there it is, curling out of the bouquet, but being held into it by the rest of the material. So that's about a third of the bouquet. I'm going to tie it up. And uh, pop it to one side while I make the rest of it. And you can see already, it's not golden but it, there is a theme that's making it golden. Do you see? Oh, I like this. I like this combination. Mid-September, grey outside, cobwebs everywhere. Even though we've had this unexpectedly, unseasonably hot weather, and it's very muggy out still, this feels properly September-y, and it's a real September-y bouquet. But, but september it doesn't have to be dark, but it still feels very seasonal. Teak, what are you whinging about? Where are you? Teaks? Where are you? Right, there's a third, I'll pop it in here. We'll make the rest. Right, so there she is, three sections. Let's move this out of the way. You'll be able to reverse your trolley at speed. In this job, right, there is section one huge flop here of this amazing <laughs> that's millet and it looks in this size it looks disproportionately large but when I put all three bouquets together I should have made quite a big bouquet um, and then this bit needs to be hung into the mix so Here are the two I've made earlier. You can see the two bunches. And I'm going to put the third in. And you see how the two bunches go? One faces by my thumb, one going the other way in the background. And I'm going to do this third one going the same direction. So they go, it's like a, a bouquet made with three stems and each bunch is one stem. So it's going to hook right behind here. And then they fit really nicely together. Woof, there you are. If I had tied, that's not a huge number of stems actually. They're quite long and it's quite heavy. You do need to be strong in this job. Biceps. Um, I'm gonna tie them round. Around a few 
few times with my racket. It's, I don't want it to drop. Once you've got your raffia nicely tied round, you can let go. And just tie a knot. You have to hope the raffia doesn't break. I have to say this doesn't fit. Sometimes you get raffia that doesn't feel very strong and this doesn't feel very strong. However, Et voilà. Great big enormous bouquet and suddenly this big bunch of grass here is much more in proportion. So I'm going to snip the ends of my raffia off. Woo. Tidy up the stems. I want them to be sort of the same length careful not to snip off my lovely Cobia scandals. Sometimes you just need the florist for scale. Diddly diddly dee. Oh, good colour. Now you see the colour? So it's not yellow, but for a golden wedding, it's a goldenish feel. It's by no means is it a yellow bouquet, but there's plenty in there. And when I make bouquets, I try and make them look like, I want them to look like a border. Pop this in here. I want them to look as though they're the garden, literally garden gathered. I want them to look like a just great mush of garden, which they probably do. And some of you, I can hear you going, well, yeah, but you know, that's easy. Well, have a go. <laughs> Let's put this up here. And bring it forward. Right, let's have a look. I'll show you more close up. And there is a great big enormous bouquet. And actually, I'm going to deliver it in the vase. Uh, it's only going up the road. And I will get the vase back. See how the detail of the Spanish flag is good in there, isn't it? It's not a big showy flower, but it's just about the detail. And... the long stems of the cobia can sit on the table. They're really tough. This cobia scandals is really tough. It's great to cut. There's a little bit of pink in there. Uh, this is phlox, achillea, snapdragon, clary sage, And there's enough detail to balance out the weight of the big, heavy accent flowers, the dahlias and the sunflowers. I'd say I love, I love to have, if you have a clean vase with stems in it and material collapsing out of the vase like this, it looks lighter, I think, because the stems of the cut bouquet do not touch the bottom of the vase. There is that, literally this space of light lifts everything and makes it lighter. There you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this little clip. Um, and I hope you go outside and play with color. Uh, on the cl our club members, we're doing a color 
a special Q and A, <laughs> Q and A about colour in we've got it scheduled for later on in the season so um if you're thinking about joining the club and are interested in color conversations we're going to do a special a special club session on color later on but for everybody i challenge you to take your take your snips out this weekend your 30 stem challenge um or whenever you see this clip take your snips out into your garden and cut some flowers which are an unusual combination cut things which you wouldn't normally cut step out of your comfort zone i think if i said to anybody oh yes i'm going to do basically orange white and yellow for which is essentially what this is for a 50th wedding anniversary bouquet people would look at me as if i was a bit odd but I love this combination. I think it's very fresh. There's plenty of gold in it for the golden wedding. You don't look at it and think there's a yellow bouquet, but just focus for a little while and allow the allow the colours to melt into one another. And it's bright and sunny and very, very good for your mental health, just to sort of, you know, Look at it as though it were a salt mandala in the Himalayas, freshly created and about to be blown away by the wind. Ephemeral art. Have a lovely day, everybody. Bye. So it's being delivered in the vase. Um, it's only going up the road and I'm sure I'll get the vase back, <laughs> waste not what not. Um, if I don't, it's not the end of the world, but uh, most of my customers or the people I work with uh, know that I, I just ask for the vases back. You know, if you don't want the vase or you haven't got room for the vase or you don't use a vase, or same with buckets, anything, please can have it back. Um, because in a world where we're trying to use less stuff, it seems very sensible that I'll look after the vases and then when I deliver flowers to you, you can have the vase for the duration of the bouquet. I'll get it back and then next time get it again. Do you see? Anyway, I'm going to deliver this very nice uh, craft paper bag. Very useful bag, nice long handles. No, I won't carry it by the handles. <laughs> it's too heavy. But it's nice to deliver like this. Right, enough. Have a lovely Sunday, everybody. I'm going to write the card. <laughs>